Oh, Steve covered his mouth this time with a yawn. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just gathering my thoughts. Although I was sitting on the couch trying to gather my thoughts too, so <laughs> this hasn't been easy. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I do sound like Jeffree Star when I do that. Welcome back to my channel. I, I don't know what happens. I'm all ready to go and then I and then I get like blah. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. You're watching this video and you would think I'm home, but I'm not. We're on vacation. That's right. The Thomas family is on vacation. And we are, guess where? Can you tell by the ears? We're in Disneyland, so we're excited to be there. I think we're having fun while we're there. I don't think we're fighting, and we'll be back soon. So um, I'm gonna tell you one of my vacation stories, so stay tuned, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you so much. So this story is about the time I tried to learn how to go scuba diving. So you would think that scuba diving is a pretty easy thing to do, but it's not. We all know it's not. You have to go to classes. Steve, you're scuba certified, right? Yeah. Who thinks it's easy? Well, Club Med. <laughs> Club Med thinks it's easy. So I know that there are really serious scuba divers out there and you have to go through hours of yeah. lessons like what's the required lesson time i don't remember the time but i had to do in like, class pass tests right in pool pass right. pool tests mm -hmm. then i had to go do a couple open water dives yeah tests yep and pass them all with instructors right yeah with instructors booklets yep and it wasn't videos <laughs> in classroom yeah and it was spread out over all right a week or two okay so that makes sense because they want to teach you about the dangers of you know of scuba diving while you're taking these classes and safety and precautions and how to help keep your partner alive if need be all that kind of stuff right oh yeah all right I decided to go on a trip by myself to Tahiti a long time ago, like 25 years ago. And there was this organization called Club Med. I don't know if anybody remembers Club Med or if it even exists anymore, but um, it was it was Club Mediterranean and you could go travel to exotic places with a bunch of like-minded people and have a really fun vacation. But I mean, it was a great organization. So I decided that I was gonna go to Tahiti. I picked Tahiti because I was around that like 25 age where I felt like I hadn't met the right person in my life and I was never going to get married and I was going to get old and if I didn't go to Tahiti now, I would never go to Tahiti because that's where I wanted to go on my honeymoon. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to go to Tahiti by myself <laughs> and enjoy it and have fun and so I bought my ticket and off to Tahiti I went. So to get to Tahiti from New Jersey is a pretty long procedure. The first part of the trip was just going from New Jersey or New York, it was actually New York, all the way to LAX. And so that flight is like an eight hour flight or 10 hour flight or six hour flight. I don't remember, but it's a lot of hours. And then the second leg of the trip is going from LAX to the island of Tahiti, which that was, I believe, between 11 and 14 hours at the time. And this is when people could smoke on the plane. <laughs> and it was, you know, just a bit of a crazy experience. Um, so then when you get to Tahiti, we had to take a hopper flight to the island that we stayed on, which was called Morea, which is an absolutely amazingly beautiful, uh, just the most pristine place you'll ever see. Just It was just absolutely gorgeous. So on the way to the Club Med Resort, I met a couple that was on their honeymoon. So um, we became really good friends and... <laughs> oh, chicka wawa. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> My fantasy. Yeah, I spent their honeymoon with them. They were very good to me. They did have some private time and, and I had my own time too, but we, we had a lot of fun together. And um, when they got back from their trip and they were showing pictures, they were like, I don't remember seeing her at the wedding. <laughs> and they're like, no, really took her to the honeymoon. So it was a great trip. But anyway, 
they have all these great inclusive things that you could do being part of Club Med. You could go snorkeling, you could go parasailing and water skiing and scuba diving and anything you wanted to do, you could pretty much do a Club Med and it, it was all included in the price of the ticket. So I was like, I'm not a very coordinated person, so I wasn't gonna do water skiing and I wasn't gonna do the parasailing, but I thought like, wow, scuba diving would be really super cool. So you had some, so there was like a, a board, it was like a board that was posted and it gave some of the rules. It said, you're gonna go scuba diving with sharks. It was a shark feeding scuba diving expedition. And I'm like, all right, I'm not really scared. I'm like, that'll be cool. I mean, if they're going and I haven't heard of anybody dying from feeding the sharks, then it sounded like a good trip. Okay, so then I'm like, but I thought you had to be like certified <laughs> to go scuba diving. And um, they said, we Club Med certify you. I'm like, well, <laughs> okay, what does that mean? They're like, so in the morning of the excursion, you go to a classroom and there's a certified instructor that gives you the basics of scuba diving for what you need to know for this trip and then you are club med certified so that you can scuba dive at any club med facility around the world after you go through this class so i'm like all right well at least you get a class you're not just going to throw me in the water with uh, and say good luck you know they're they're like go ahead you know we'll take the class so I decide to go to the class. So I'm sitting in the classroom and this adorable, adorable gentleman comes out and he is, um, he's French because it is a French island. So most of the people that worked at Club, Club Med spoke French or were French. So it was, um, there was a lot of French going on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, just the cutest little guy in the world and he begins to speak and his english is horrible i mean he can barely speak english so now i'm getting a little bit concerned because i don't understand what he's saying <laughs> so i am if i'm in a classroom where i'm learning something like i'm the one that's there taking the notes i'm writing everything down i'm absorbing it i'm rewriting it i'm highlighting it i'm i'm got questions going on in my head like I want to make sure that I understand exactly what's going on so he's talking a million miles a minute in broken English and half French because a couple times I said was that English to the person next to me like no that was French so I'm like he's not even speaking English and all he kept saying after he would say something is it's okay for you <laughs> and I was sitting there shaking my head going no <laughs> They're going through PSI and what you have to be at and when when your air starts getting low like it was just for me and, and how you share between people if they're having a problem with their oxygen tank and my brain is just going to explode because he, all he keeps saying, it's okay for you? <laughs> and I keep saying, no. And he goes, it's okay for you. <laughs> so now he's like sick of seeing me shaking my head saying no. All right, so we're done with the classroom now, which I think was a total of 20 minutes. <laughs> Maybe it was 20 minutes. And they tell us, okay, now we're gonna go out to the dock and we're gonna fit you with um, a life vest and we're gonna give you your equipment and we have a perimeter set up and we're gonna just dive in this small area. So we're gonna go, we, so we walk down to the dock, we're all gonna swim in this like closed off area and they are going and we're gonna have partners and they're gonna put fit us with equipment and give us our tanks and all that stuff so again I'm, I'm getting more and more nervous because now we're gonna really do something and I still don't understand anything so the little cute French instructor that kept saying it's okay for you <laughs> says you me partners it's okay for you <laughs> God, no, it's not okay for me. But then I'm like, all right, so he must sense that I'm nervous and I can't understand what's going on, so it would be best if I was partnered up with him. All right, so now it's time to put on the life vest, and they're going through life vest. And I know that I'm a larger woman now, but when I was younger, I was thin, but I had a very large bosom. <laughs> so they were having a problem fitting me with a vest. So I have two guys, the it's okay for you guy and another guy grabbing me and th 
pulling me into this life vest and zippering it up. And I mean, two men, they're shoving my boobs into the life vest. <laughs> they're like squeezing me from all around. And then they get the life vest up and they're like, okay. And I'm like, don't feel violated at all. <laughs> Thank you so much for feeling me up and get me in this life vest. And um, I think we're ready to go. So now I've got my tank on, I've got the flippers. And there, and now everybody's jumping in the water. So everybody else feels confident and secure. And now it's time to jump in the water. And I won't jump in the water. So I'm standing on the dock and I'm holding up the entire class. The little French guy's like, come on, jump in. And he, everybody's in the water but me. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna sink to the bottom. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get up. Nobody's gonna be able to get me up. I'm like, no, just forget it. And then some guy from behind me comes and pushes me into the water <laughs> like just shoves me off the dock into the water so now i go down and of course i'm panicking but he was right i i did float up to the top and now you know i calm down and they're they're laughing and everything you know is thumbs up and everybody's having a good time and all the teams are doing their thing and now it's me and um, my partner so he tells me that I have to like I guess let air out and I don't know if I'm remembering this right I have to do something where I will start to sink down into the water <laughs> so equal so, you're equalizing yes yeah, so, <laughs> so he's telling me what to turn on the knob on this thing so that I will start going down in the water because I'm above the water right now and I've got my you know my visor on and he well not a visor goggles. my goggles on and he's got his on and we st we're starting to go down. I mean, I can see this in my head so clearly. We're starting to go down. The top of my head isn't even under the water yet. That's how slow we're going down. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm done. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I do not want to do this. Just forget the whole thing. Get me out of the water. I'm done. Like, so. So unfortunately, that was the extent of my scuba diving in um, Club Med. So I didn't get Club Med certified, I didn't get regular certified, and I don't think that after that experience, I really want to try going scuba diving again, which is kind of funny because Steve, I think, really enjoys scuba diving. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course he does. So I'm sure it's something that if I said, you know what, I had a really good experience, I'd love to go scuba diving, he'd probably get back into it and we'd go scuba diving, but... We'd have something in common. We would have something in common. But seriously, after that, what I just told you, I mean, was that a horrible first experience of learning how to scuba dive? Well, yeah, because it's kind of intimidating, <laughs> especially when you didn't understand anything in the class. Nothing. If you would have understood them, you probably would have been like realizing it's actually pretty, uh, yeah, pretty easy breezy. I mean, but there were but there were other things too about the scuba diving trip that these were just this was just a scuba diving lesson part, just learning about how to do the PSI and go under and share um, share the air tank with your partner, and that was just that part. There was a whole other part of it too, like. We're gonna go feed the sharks. So um, if you nick yourself in the morning while you're shaving, you can't go. <laughs> because that means that even that little bit of clotted blood would be enough to entice the shark to go after you instead of the food that they were feeding them. And if a woman happened to, you know, have that time of the month, you couldn't go then either because of, you know, the, the amount of um, blood that is involved. So, but what I did manage to do, um, I guess because they felt so sorry for me, and I'm sure that this little French man is probably telling this story to his YouTube people and the internet in his own version of how funny this story was to him. Um, then I lost my train of thought because I thought <laughs> you telling me to stop. No, you're talking about the funny French man telling his version of the story. Yeah. But that's not what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something else. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you leave a comment and like it and subscribe because we always need more subscribers. And um, if you wanna see anything special on the channel, you can always leave me a comment and I will definitely read your comments and respond within like a millisecond because I don't get that many comments. So <laughs> would love to hear from you. 
thank you for watching and the next video you see after this will have been we will be back from Disneyland and the Los Angeles area and we'll share with you some excitement then so have a good one thanks for watching smart tell the whole world that we're not going to be at home so they can come rob us nobody knows who we are well, let's epilogue this bish so describe for the audience what your ideal vacation now looks like oh okay so <laughs> so again um as steve and i don't agree on a lot of stuff um but my ideal vacation now and it's always been my ideal vacation even when i went to tahiti it was my ideal vacation my ideal vacation is to go somewhere like a tropical island tahiti um, get out of bed in the morning, go to the pool or the beach, go to the buffet, go to the pool, go to the buffet, go to the pool, have dinner at the buffet, <laughs> go to my room and go to sleep and start all over. And I could do that for 10 days straight. That's my ideal vacation. Maybe one of those days I might venture to do something a little bit unique. Um, like I think the last, uh, the other vacation I went on by myself, I did go on a day's excursion. I did, I went one day on an excursion. Um, but normally that's all I wanna do, but Steve,